SK, GlaxoSmithKline, is making a billion doses of the advent that it used in the pandemic vaccine, which was the, when, you know, WHO in 2009 fabricated a phony pandemic in order to, and, and people should know about this, what happened is GlaxoSmithKline signed sleeper with WHO pressure a number of African nations and European nations signed what they call sleeper contracts. And what that means is that the nation agreed to buy a certain number of doses of Glaxo's pandemic vaccine, which had never been tested. As long as the WHO call, uh, declared a flu pandemic, blind flu pandemic, and the, the nations felt safe signing those contracts because there was a specific definition of, of pandemic that WHO had used for a generation. And that required outbreaks, epidemic outbreaks in many countries around the world with massive amounts of deaths. And that was part of the definition. You had to have massive amounts of deaths. So in 2009, a couple people got a version of swine flu, only a couple hundred people, I think 144 people. And WHO declared a pandemic, but there was no pandemic and the pandemic never arrived. But what they did was they changed the definition of pandemic so that it just said epidemics around the world, but it didn't require any deaths. Now you can have a pandemic with no deaths, with zero deaths. And they declared the pandemic and it triggered those sleeper contracts. And those nations had to spend billions and billions and billions of dollars buying a worthless vaccine for a pandemic that did not exist. This is in 2009. That pandemic vaccine contained a very dangerous adjuvant. My memory is that it was a squalene adjuvant. And all around the world and the nations that use that GlaxoSmithKline pandemic vaccine, there suddenly had epidemics of narcolepsy. And it was traced through the adjuvant. And the vaccine was pulled. Nations paid for the vaccines, but, but most of them after the narcolepsy epidemic uh, began, most of them did not give the vaccine to their children, to any more children. But still, you had thousands of children who got this disease, debilitating disease. And we thought at least, well, that's the last we're ever going to see of that terrible adjuvant. But GSK just announced that it has made a billion doses of that adjuvant that is now selling to the companies who are creating these new vaccines for this pandemic. Oh, we're going to get, you know, and everybody knows it causes narcolepsy. Oh, you know, the idea that they're doing that again just shows that, um, that they're not taking safety, vaccine safety, seriously. Uh, and, you know, people are asking on the, the Instagram feed that I'm kind of looking at, what is an adjuvant? And... And you know this, Polly, that what happened is very early on in the, in the field of vaccinology, people began recognizing that live virus vaccines, which were the original kind of vaccines, would actually spread the disease. So that every passage, for example, the polio vaccine, oral polio vaccine, you eat it, it goes through your body. Every time it passes through your body, polio is growing in your stomach and there are mutations that occur that can restore the polio a virus to extreme virulency, to deadly virulency. So that's why the WHO says that 70% of the polio today on earth is vaccine polio. That is the polio that's gone through somebody's body 
and then it gets into the local waterway and it contaminates the whole community and it, and it starts an epidemic of polio in the community. We see epidemics today in the Congo, in Nigeria, in the Philippines, in Afghanistan, and, and in India that are coming from Bill Gates' polio vaccine. If you look at the chicken pox vaccine manufacturer's insert, it says if you get this vaccine, which is a live virus vaccine, do not go near pregnant women for six weeks or people who are immunocompromised because you can actually spread that, uh, spread chicken pox to those people and vaccines are chicken pox. Flu vaccines are known to spread flu at six times the rate that you would get from an un unvaccinated person with the flu. And, and then and the pertussis vaccine turns people into asymptomatic carriers so that you are spreading pertussis everywhere you go. The regulators very, very early on expressed a preference for dead virus vaccines. A dead virus vaccine is a vaccine where they take the virus that's been attenuated, it's been killed with chemicals, or it's been chopped up into pieces and you inject a piece of the virus and it's supposed to stimulate your immune system so that it recognizes that virus and produces antibodies next time it sees the real thing. The problem with dead virus vaccines is they don't provide immunity that is very robust or durable. And it was neither robust nor durable enough to get a license. And very early on, vaccinologists learned that if they put something horrendously toxic into that vaccine with the dead virus in it, that the body's immune system would be shocked by that toxic material and say, holy cow, whatever this is, is really dangerous, and I'm going to remember it, and I'm going to produce a huge allergic reaction to that viral particle, the antigen particle, the next time I see it. And they realized that they could use dead virus vaccines as long as they put a really horrendously toxic adjuvant into the vaccine. And adjuvant means something that adds to the immune response or boosts the immune response. Vaccinologists began a search around the world for the most toxic substances known to man. And they found them, particularly mercury, which for many years they said we're putting it in the vaccine as a preservative, but it was not in there as a preservative. It was in there as an adjuvant. The problem was, and actually Peter Marks and Tony Fauci, some other uh, um, uh, public officials told this to me and Mark Hyman and Lynn Redwood when we had a meeting with them in 2015. We said to them, you know, why can't you take the mercury out of the vaccines? The preservative, you can, you don't need a preservative. You can use single pot doses. And they said to us, well, actually, it's not in the vaccine as a preservative. It's there as an adjuvant. We knew, Lynn whispered to me at that meeting, that's illegal. You, and that's what happened. It's illegal to use an adjuvant that is dangerous. You have to prove that it is not dangerous. And they couldn't do that with mercury. So they said, we'll put it in there as an adjuvant, but we'll call it a preservative because there's no rule that you can't use a toxic preservative. That's what they were doing all that time. And they went around the world and they found the most toxic elements known to man. Mercury is the most toxic element that we know of in the universe that is not radioactive. It is a thousand times more neurotoxic than lead. Would you ever allow anybody to shoot your child up with lead? No, of course not. Well, aluminum is a, or mercury is a thousand times worse. And we gave that to every child in America for 25 years. And we're living with the consequence right now, which is the vaccine generation that began in 1989. We took it out of vaccines in 2003, out of the pediatric vaccines. But only in the United States and Europe. They continued to give it to black children, 161 million black children in Africa. 
and the WHO, can, and we were told this by Bill Thompson, we said, what, why in 2003, when you took it out of the pediatric vaccine, that DTAP vaccine, the hip vaccine, and the hepatitis B, took it out of those vaccines, and they put aluminum in those vaccines instead. At the same year, 2003, they put mercury in the flu vaccine, and they mandated flu to every child, every year of life, beginning at six months, and to pregnant women. So the children in America never got a break from mercury. And we said to Bill Thompson, why in the world did they do that? They were, they were, they were this close. They were going to take it out of the vaccines. Why did they put it back in the flu vaccine when they took it out of the other three? And he said that the WHO went to CDC and said, you can't take it out of it, all the vaccines because the black people in Africa are going to complain. The black people, the black countries, and the ministers of those nations are saying, why are you only giving mercury to Africans? You're taking it out of all the vaccines given to white people. Why are you doing that and only giving this very toxic brain poison to our black children? And so WHO went to, and of course, the reason they're doing that is because it's cheaper. It's a couple pennies cheaper per vial. That's that meant a lot to the vaccine company. They didn't care if they're poisoning all these kids in Africa. So the WHO went to CDC and said, you can't take it out of all your vaccines because it's gonna make us look bad in Africa. We won't be able to sell this to these black countries anymore. Oh, as a favor to WHO, CDC added it back into one vaccine, which was the flu vaccine, which they continue to give our pregnant women and children that vaccine. And um, and that is, of course, that is what uh, Bill Thompson, who is a senior scientist at CDC's vaccine division for tw almost 20 years, for 19 years, and now is still continues to be an employee of the CDC, and that's what he told us. Because everybody wondered why did they put it in the flu vaccine? Here they took it out of the three pediatric vaccines. Why did they put it in the flu vaccine? And that's why. And as you know, Polly, there's a lot of kids that were injured by that, by mercury. It's, uh, you know, there, there, are, there are no studies that show that mercury can be given to children safely.